is brought to you by Society Art Villare. This exclusive gallery features local and international artists showcasing their extraordinary artistic talents. This fine gallery may also serve as a venue for your special events. You can find them on Instagram and online at societyart.ca. Thank you, Society Art Villare. And now we return you to your podcast. We're back. Hey, we're back. We are I back. like this podca- uh, pod- podcast. podcast. Why do I like this podcast? I'm going to tell you. Because it is informative when we are discussing Italian Canadian situations, topics. I like to bring about the different segments, to introduce everybody to, you know, things that we enjoy, but also we can relate to. And not just Italian, but also different cultures as well, because Italians like to dabble also in different cultures. But ulti- really? No. Ultimately, they like us. Let's, let's be honest. <laughs> let's be honest. No, they don't. They don't. They like, you no, know. We like our stuff. You take, I we tell like my dad, like we, our generation starts to dabble in, in different cultures because, you know, we get to. We're modern. We, we're a little bit more modern. Like, yeah. hey, I want to go eat sushi. I love sushi. I want to go I eat Szechuan. When I talk to my dad and I say, hey, dad, you want to go for sushi? He looks at me like, could you what give me a plate of pasta, please? And it's, <laughs> that's the old generation, right? Here's a ravioli. Uh, yeah, no, I'm, uh, but in all honesty, being Italian, I'm very proud to be of Italian heritage. Um, there's so much that I've gained in terms of um, cultural knowledge, and there's so much in terms of the language. Family, family is like very important. My grandparents, um, you know, so we sort of, uh, I try anyways to carry that on because I find today that's lost. And one of the big things that we had coming into the city is the Italfest. <laughs> but now <laughs> we're doing this. Let's be honest. Okay, yeah. Lisa, we're going to be honest now. We're doing this podcast on Italfest. We've been waiting to do it with Francesca. But she's <laughs> but the coup. she <laughs> is the coup. super hard to get in touch with to yeah. actually show up. I'm, we're joking with her, of course, but yeah. uh, she actually puts the whole Italfest together. Yeah. Um, so that's why she was super busy. And now she's on vacation in Italy. Uh, so basically, you know. True Italian. <laughs> yeah, true Italian. Um, she will be back on the podcast for sure. But I mean, we wanted to talk about it because it's quite cultural. It's a pretty nice, it's a very good thing the way she put it together. It's been going on for years, but it's her first year that she was in charge and she did a good job. I'm not yeah. going to lie. It was a very good job. Mm-hmm. But we're not going to, we're going to have another p- podcast where she talks about, you know, her role and how she does it. Uh, and, and what she thought of this year's e Fest. Yep. But we're just going to talk about, I mean, I had a good part. Lisa did a whole podcast, uh, which you can ever, you can check out. It's a Let's Talk It Out podcast. Yep. She did a whole podcast live interviewing people that were there, which was really cool. And I had two shows, um, one downtown and one uh, in Little Italy, and it was a lot of fun. Yep. Uh, I'm going to talk about the, you know, the songs we chose, the, 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 the way it turned out and all of that stuff. So it was a lot of fun. Yep. Uh, but let's get into it. Did you did you enjoy your time walking? Uh, let's say in Italy, you missed the downtown one. I missed the downtown one because I was in Europe on another another reason. project. Blah, 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 blah. Excuse me. Okay. Excuse me. I was too important. I had to go to Europe. I had blah, to go blah, to blah, Europe. Blah. I'm sorry. I but was Little Italy was fun. Uh, it was. Um, it's fun every year. I think it was extra special because our friend was the director and taking care of the the festival this year. So that gave us a a little bit of a tweak, a little tweakage there. Um, So we're very proud of that. And she did a phenomenal job. I think the the best part of the Italian Fest is just walking along the street and just seeing the authentic beauty that Italians and old school Italians lived. Well, not only old school. No, but they're bringing it today yeah the different so artwork can, the exactly. different food the cars the yeah it's a really good vibe exactly and, and on that note like did you feel it when you were in little Italy? i did and it brought back a lot of memories right because my grandparents are no longer here it brings back the memories and sort of say oh my god you know i remember when you know my grandfather used to tell me stories my grandmother used to tell me stories about uh you know carrying laundry on her head because she's from the south and she used to walk through the terrain so <laughs> how it did brought- Fez bring that Memory, yeah. Because I'm reminiscing. <laughs> Shut up. We were just, we, Stop we, ruining my reminisce. We could just fucking walk and have four sausage sandwiches in 
and no, any, that's you, Vani. That's the modern version of the Italian. Well, no, I eat tapas. There's like fucking with a beer sandwiches. here, a wine here, and it's all within not even walking distance. You can just reach out and have a pizza at Cornelli and have You're an ice so cream spoiled, across buddy. the street. It's so fucking good. <laughs> okay, yes, okay, that is good. But I mean, it's the whole purpose of Ital Fest is to reminisce and rejoice in our culture about our culture and our heritage. And um, I had the pleasure to speak to a lot of people. A lot of people, a lot of, uh, actually, at um, uh, one, one of the stores that uh, I came across was Milano's. And um, Milano's, I met a very lovely lady. She was actually the owner of uh, Milano's. And she was telling me the story about her father's old bike of the 1930s when he used to make deliveries and it was on oh display. God. Yes, I remember yes, that. Yes, it was red. That's and really she was cool. telling us the story about the food and how they prepared the food and how for Italians, we all know food and drink are very important. We can't pass a day without a glass of wine or maybe you know engorge ourselves on like six meals because that's how we are, right? Um, she's the owner of Milano's? I mean, Milano, Did she give yeah. her secret as to how to uh, take a small little mom and pop shop? Because that's what it was. It was yeah. a little fruit store, and I think they own the whole block now. And yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. They just think, fucking yeah, grocery yeah, store, yeah, yeah. and was... they're making tons of money. What? Did you give us that secret? I don't no, she so. didn't. <laughs> but they do have a lot of Italian goods there. A lot of, course, of Italian of uh, imports, and it's 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 absolutely amazing. I'm yeah. a soprasata girl. I'm like the soprasata salami. Berkici, Berkici is very, very good. is very good too. Yeah. But um, the cheeses, Parmigian. Oh my God! Like you, I can't. It was really good. Asiago, yeah. like I, I can't because if I have a Parmesan block, that block is going down. Like I, I, I just the I whole eat, block. I eat shards. You like might I, be constipated for a while, but it's I mean, okay. You know, it's so major. worth it. It's so worth it. But I don't take slices. I take shards, like massive wedges. It is so good. I'm but gonna give. Sopresata. Sorry, I gotta cut you off here because you know what? This is all bringing back a great week. Yeah. Um, and it was really nice in Little Italy. And this is, I'm not, okay, I don't want to be negative. I'm not, you know, this is. But you my, will. I, know. I will, I will. Yeah. This is my one thing I'm going to say. So, because I was on both. So, basically, the way they do it is one weekend, it's two weekends long. One weekend is in Little Italy. The next weekend is downtown. Yeah. Which I can't say the spectacle, which is amazing. Yeah. So, that's my only comment that I'm going to make. Little Italy, and I guess they need time. Like, because Cartier de Spectacle is new. I think it's the second year they've done it there. Mm -hmm. So it's a new thing. So I guess I f I'm figuring they need time. Because Little Italy, they know. Everybody knows. Uh, every store that's there puts out their stuff. You buy yeah. soccer jerseys of all the Italian teams. There's, you know, tons of stuff. In downtown, that was the only thing I found. It's amazing to do it downtown because you're yeah. hitting more people. You're hitting a, a, an area that's beautiful. Central. central. Super central. You get a lot of people just walking by. Uh, and it's amazing that we're taking over downtown Montreal. But at the same time, I didn't feel it as Italian. Yeah, I can understand that. So there was, yeah. the stage was really nice. The performances were really good. The Italianness was there in terms of music. They brought the culture like there was an accordion player and a girl doing some acrobatic acts. Oh, sweet. It was cool. But I couldn't find an espresso anywhere. Oh, no, that's why you weren't happy. <laughs> well, no, but I mean... <laughs> Yeah. There should be that, I think, there was not one cannoli vendor. There was oh. not one place where you can play cards. There was not a bar. Now, I'm not expecting to open a bar, but I feel they should bring in a few more uh, Italian cultures, like, like ice cream, gelato, uh, espresso. Hey, you can't get an espresso at or an panino. Italian festival. Or a panino or something, a sausage sandwich. They didn't have any of that. And yeah. Maybe they don't have the permits. I don't know all the rules. But they need to find a way, I feel. And it's not negative because it's good being downtown, but I think they, they need to find a way to make it a little bit more... Representative. Representative yeah. in terms of what they sell, not in terms mm -hmm. of the, the, the performance because the performances were all Italian. Well, were you not in the performance? I was, I was. And we, um, I literally put together a, a band just for that. And we called it Ital Vibe. And I had a blast doing it because... Nowadays, the younger generation doesn't want to hear too much Italian music. So I do a lot of weddings. Yeah. And they tell us, like, yeah, one or two, and then let's get this party started, right? Um, but this this performance was for Ital Fest, and yeah. I put together a show uh, with different musicians that I never worked with, all Italian. Um, and, and it was, we played 13, 14 Italian songs, Italian hits. Yeah. Classic. We gave them a modern twist. Nice. Uh, it was, they were classic songs. 
uh, Useracino, a classic Napolitan song. We did it funked up. Uh, we did uh, L'Italiano, which is yes. that, and we did it like a blues rock, like it was heavier, uh, not the original folky version. We did Funicoli, Funicola. Oh, that was crazy. Which we yeah. did like rock, but with an Italian folk style in the back. Um, you know, Grande Amore, some new songs. We did a song from Neck. Uh, we did Eros Ramazzotti. We mm. did a song from The Colors, which right now is playing. It's called Ita- Italo Disco. So we did classics and new stuff. And a lot of fun. Uh, the, the, the stages were fun. The sound was a lot of fun. The, the, the reaction from the crowd was great. Of course, we did uh, Sarà Perché Ti Amo, which is the, you know, uh, yeah. it's the classic. That's... Everybody's Everybody loves that song right now. Uh, but the people got involved. The band had a good time. And it was a lot of fun. It was good to see uh, all, all the, the people singing the songs with us. Like We made people sing with us. And, and they, everybody knew all the words. So, you know, we did Gloria. Like, I know. It's an 80s it song. Great. It's a classic. We funked it up a little bit. Uh, it was fun. And we played in both stages. And both stages were nice. Uh, fun to play at. Different vibes completely. And when I played, there was other bands. It was Astro Gates was there that day. Oh, not uh, in Little Italy. Not in Little Italy. Housefly Hum was there. Yeah. Uh, really cool guys. Really cool bands. They sounded really good. Um, who else did I see? In Italy, Italy there was a Nicola Ciccone, which yes. was, that was a big act. That was very good. Justin Saladino Justin was there. Justin Saladino was there. There was really good acts, and, and it was a lot of fun. Gianni Bodo. And it was fun to play really traditional Italian stuff. It it's refreshing to hear. For me, it was fun. It was different, and I really, really enjoyed it. And we, I think we picked some good songs, obviously, that came from the heart. Yeah. Uh, myself and my brother picked them, and, and we had a, a, a good time. I mean, uh, I won't say the audience had a good time. You, Lisa, you can say it. <laughs> I could good. say that, yeah. Uh, well, I was there doing the Italfest Fest for our sister podcast, actually, our cousin podcast. Um, let's talk it out. But I had the privilege of listening to a lot of the music, a lot of the, um, you know, to see the, the bands perform, and it was definitely inspirational. I mean, uh, to listen to all the old songs that we listened to when we were younger, I mean, it takes you back. And so when you put in a little bit of a modern twist and a modern vibe to it, um, it actually engages the younger population, which I hope it did. And I do know that some of the people in the audience were actually singing. And some of the people in the audience, I actually knew, they approached me, they're like, Lisa, I know a lot of people. Not oh many, my god, many, what a show! <laughs> Man, a lot of no, well, I mean, I knew people who were there, I knew people who were there, and um, they had nothing but very favorable things to say about your band. When that was you were, fun. Yeah, when you were performing, um, they, they were dancing. There's a lot of people, there were people dancing yeah, as well, of course, so of course. everybody was engaged, and I think that's the whole point of bringing a community together, especially during times of let's say festivals of this sort, is that everybody has one thing in common, right, yeah. and yeah. that they have one. Thing that they they come together with, and that is the the unity is uh, for Italy. Now the Italian flag we know is also the colors what they represent. Now, I'm not going to go into it because I don't know every color exactly, but one of them represents unity. So I think that's very important, and that's well. Needless you know, the to whole say, part of it. Needless to say, um, this was supposed to be for us. It was supposed to be like a one-off. Like just yeah. for us, it was supposed to be like let's just do that. You know, for Ita Fest, and that's it. And I'm like. After playing it, it's like, nope, I think I want to do more. You got the bug. I, I got the bug, and I think I want to do uh, like theme nights of just classic and modern Italian tunes played with a twist and have That's fun. Great. You know, good vocals. Yeah. Italians are known for opera. Like Pavarotti was one of the most famous op- opera singers in mm-hmm. the world, and uh, you know, we uh, it's 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 good to go back uh, mm-hmm. once in a while and get that feel, get that vibe, get that Ital vibe. Ital Fuck, was that oh, good or what? Nice that segue. was good. That was good. Nice. Segue. So there will be more Ital vibe happening for sure. All kinds of vibing. And back to Francesca, she did a fantastic job mm-hmm. organizing all of this. Yep. Um, you know, it's 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 it was fun. It was fun. It was definitely. I just, I, I just wish I had the scooter. <laughs> like she had a scooter. She had the little carts, and she's driving around. Like she was under stress, of course, and I'm downplaying the whole thing. But she was driving in there. She was being driven, and um, I, I approached her and I said, "Well, where's my coffee?" She's like, I, "I'm busy." Yeah. I'm busy right now. It was even hard. <laughs> I'm busy. I have so many things. Going it was on. so hard to get her to even to interview yeah. her. Yeah, I'm making fun of her, but really, it was hard to interview. But I, I managed to stop her. 
I flagged her down and she managed to give me a little bit of a, you know, summary, a synopsis of how the event was going for her. And she looked like she was sweating and stressed. I'm well, like, okay. She, she had to reconstruct the stage of hours course. before performances. So no, just to show you lot. the lot. things that happen at these type of big events. They're big events. It's, it's a big undertaking. It's mm -hmm. not a, it's not let's set up two little speakers and have a little party here. <laughs> it's a big ass fucking event. It's exactly. days of setup and months of preparation. So. Well, I'm sure they have a Telfest other parts of the world or yeah. in other cities. I know they have in Ottawa as well. Um, but outside our Canadian borders, I'm not really sure. But if they do, we invite everybody to like make a comment and let us know what it is that you guys do where you're from or whatever. Well, uh, Johnny Bodo played in Mississauga. There you go. See, Mississauga. And, and well, then they're, they're, they're massively Italian there. Woodbridge is like yeah. a huge... I uh, had the contract to play in the at the Ottawa uh, Ethel Fest. It never panned out. We kind of got it, and they whatever they ran out of sponsors. But that's a whole other story. But they do have they do have. They were um, making sauce. They were making sauce. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they do have uh, an Ethel Fest there. I know Toronto. I'm sure yeah. New York must have a huge one. Well, New York is huge on yeah, Italians. Of course, of course. New so. York, New Jersey. I mean, that's that's predominantly the hub when it comes to. You know, a town, especially the way they talk. The yeah. way they talk. What? What about New Jersey and Boston? <laughs> yeah, what about Boston. Boston? I like the way they talk. Talk. <laughs> talk. I like the way they talk. Sure. You guys, sure. you guys need to know that Lisa is like a chameleon when it comes to languages. <laughs> All of a sudden, if a francophone comes in, she becomes like the biggest Pirlen Quebecois ever. <gasps> like, hey, hello, talk. comment ça vous? Like, she gets really heavy into it. Uh, yeah, yeah, and then a, an Italian walks by and, uh, ciao, come stai? But like from Rome, she'll give the from Rome, Rome accent. Ciao, and, come then, come and then all of a sudden, a Napolitan comes, hey, well, yo, come stai? No, no, the Calabres comes out. Tutta post. No, but nobody will understand. Nobody will understand if I speak the Calabres. Or you will pick up some words but it'll just be mishmash <laughs> so yeah i don't speak the calabres that much so that Guys, ends our yes but our, if you if you were at Ita fest what are your thoughts share it with us send it to us put it in the comments write to us whatever share us your thoughts about Ita fest this year yeah what exactly. you liked what you disliked if, whatever just let us know it's always good to know it's always good to put in the comments we want more food and just we say. know, we know the, we know the director, we know the organizer. Yeah, we'll wink, pull it wink. for you. Yeah, I know the paninis were good. I just have to. They say. were good. Yeah. They were. They were really like wow. Okay, guys. So that concludes our podcast for this evening, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye bye. Bye.